Today, we're gonna test out the difference of the slow motion of 120 frames per second between the Sony a7S III 4K and the Sony a7IV 1080p. So let's put them to the test. If you've been recently debating if you should get a Sony a7S III or a ZV-E1 or the Sony a7IV for a little bit more of the video work, today I'm gonna kinda help you out with a little bit of one of the most important things that most people get either camera for, either the 4K 120 or they kind of go into sacrificing that to go with a little bit more of a budget friendly. I wanted to test out mainly how well the low light capabilities would work with the Sony a7 IV with the SNQ mode to get the 10-bit color since that's the only way that you can get 10-bit color for the 120 frames per second slow motion since for whatever reason Sony never really let you have it at you know 1080p with 10-bit color even though they could have easily done that. But a lot of people are contemplating getting a Sony a7 S3 or a ZV-E1 because you get that 4K 120 frames per second with amazing low light capabilities because of the 12,800 dual native ISO with the S-Log3. So it kind of got me thinking to see how much of a difference it would be to see the 1080p in low light versus, you know, the 4K over here since I've done a comparison between these two cameras before to see if you really needed the 4K 120 frames per second. And it got me thinking really about the low light capability. So we're gonna go ahead and test it out to see if you can get by with the Sony a7 IV and save some money, or maybe you should get a Sony a7 S3 if you're wanting to get that capabilities of the 4K 120 frames per second, or if maybe a ZV-E1 would be better in your budget. So first, before we do any true low light tests when it's like more limited light, we're gonna be doing it here when it's like kind of getting to that sunset hour just to showcase a little bit of how the sensors work with more limited light. But then we'll go as well to do more of the lower light once kind of the sunset is gone and just use whatever limited light is available. to See how clean the image is with the Sony a7 IV and the 10-bit SNQ mode for the 120 frames per second since it's 1080p and I'll also compare it to my Sony a7S III so you can get a little bit of a, an idea if the 4K would be great because whatever it looks on the a7S III would be like, it'd be the same for my ZV-E1. So in case you're trying to go for a camera of that budget with the ZV-E1 over the a7S III. So basically the only difference will be with the a7 IV, you have different ISOs for the S-Log3. Since I shoot an S-Log3, if you wanna use s and Intel, then just do that. But right now the 800 is the, the, uh, the ISO that's the native for the S-Log3 for the a7 IV. But if we need more light, we can go to the 3200, which should be more than better to use. We got the Sony a7S III, the native ISO for the S-Log3 is 640 and 12,800. So I have to kind of compensate a little bit since it's already at, you know, negative or maybe the plus plus, I'm losing a lot of dynamic range. So I'm gonna have to go to the 12,800 and now to make sure that it stays properly exposed, I'm gonna have to use a variable ND filter. So besides having the 4K at 120 frames per second for the Sony a7S III and the ZV-E1, obviously you get, you know, the nicer low light capability. So that's something that'll help out for having better quality when it comes down to just having these kind of setups for, you know, slow motion.
So after coming home to review the footage for both cameras, I kind of want to give you a little bit of my thoughts and findings that kind of surprised me a little bit, but also didn't surprise me for certain things. First and foremost, honestly, the 4K120 is going to be better in the ZV-E1 and cameras like the A7S 3 mainly due to having that 12,800 ISO. But you're going to have to ask yourself if the difference in budget is going to be worth it for you. Obviously, the ZV-E1 is going to be more in the price point of the A7 IV, but you're also giving up a lot of the pro specs that the Sony a7S 3 has. The dual SD cards, having a little bit more of a mechanical shutter, as well as the viewfinder. So that can be a little bit of a neglect when it comes down to the ZV-E1, since you're going to have to just hope that, you know, one SD card is going to be more than enough. And as well, the overheating issues compared to the Sony a7S 3 that seem to be non-existing. For me, the a7 IV is a little bit more niche into a hybrid camera where you get a pretty good specs for from both worlds with the photography and the video world and the CVE-1 and the A7S 3 is more just for the video part. So for me, obviously in the standing point when it comes down to performance of video, the ZVE-1 and the A7S 3 are gonna be just superior in that aspect for most of the video capabilities of things. Now, don't get me wrong, the Sony A7 IV has more than enough juice to fulfill your you know, cinematic needs and every kind of video footage that you might want, but having the 1080p with the S and Q mode only to get the 10 bit color to be able to color grade a little bit nicer compared to having the 4k 120 is going to be a little bit of a bigger difference when it comes down to the low light capabilities for me noticing it really well whenever i was going into the more lower light not so much the sunset kind of type of time you start noticing that you can only push the footage for the sony a7 IV to the 3200 native iso that it has since it usually shoots at 800 and then 3200 with the s log 3 with the a7 s3 you have the 600 40 and then the 12,800 ISO so it has a major advantage when it comes down to that. I'm sure if you kind of tinker around to kind of figure out different types of modes to have maybe more dynamic range but also not as much to you know have that information when it comes down to like S-Log3 that it would have you could probably still get by with a Sony a7 IV maybe doing some S-Cinetone or something along those lines since I've done similar videos about that for the 4k 24 frames per second. Now when it comes into the Sony a7 S3 just the image is just cleaner you have a little bit more sharper image especially because it's 4k versus a more softer image from the 1080p with the you know a7 IV where it starts being the major difference is when you start seeing way less light available where the sony a7s3 just really shines with a 4k 120 since you have to really crank up that iso since you have a higher shutter frame rate so that you can get that slow motion with the proper 180 rule the sony a7 IV the 3200 is, you know, doable depending on certain situations, but I actually did crank it up to 12,800 ISO at S-Log3 just to see what would happen. And to be honest, it's kind of terrible. Can you use it and everything? I'm sure you could maybe do a little bit of post-production that you might need to. So if it'll save you some money, obviously that's not a bad thing to go with. But personally, for a little bit of the grain that you could see from the Sony a7 IV with the S&Q mode, wasn't a deal breaker for me personally for most average kind of usage that you would want to use it for compared to having this you know fork over a little bit more cash to get the a7s3 now where it gets a little bit tricky though if you're able to get the sony a7s3 used then it kind of really defeats the a7 IV if you're wanting to have more of a video centered camera because well you can probably get one used for 2500 2700 versus getting this one new between 2200 and 2500 depending if it's on sale and one kind of odd little thing that i noticed as well after doing some testing because i try to make them as you know the same as possible i did notice the slight crop of the 4k 120 of the sony a7 s3 yet the a7 IV didn't seem to have a crop with the 1080p SNQ mode of the 120 frames per second or if it had a crop it was slightly none to existent from comparison from both of them because I actually did this in my office when I was you know kind of checking out the footage to see which one would be better so that way you can see a little bit of an example of a little bit of the crop that is showcased between both of these now is it major kind of you know shock of the world that you're not going to be able to use the Sony a7 IV for the 4k 120 because of that slight crop 
I highly doubt it. I mean, obviously people really can do with a 4K60 crop of the a7 IV, which is way worse. So I think you'll be more than perfectly fine with the 4K120, you know, crop that it has on the a7S III. So personally for me, I would honestly go more for a video sensor camera like the a7S III or the ZV-E1 when it comes into low light capabilities, especially for the 4K120, because you get that 4K goodness, but as well better low light capabilities with the 12,800 ISO. The Sony a7 IV is more of a niche, more kind of photo center camera for me with good video but not spectacular video that you would want to use it as a more professional camera if you want to shoot more low light it does limit you a little bit with a 3200 iso compared to 12800 but can you do great things with this of course you can it just really depends on what you're trying to use it for and that's why personally for me i love both of them for different scenarios i've actually had this camera with me for low light capabilities for photo and video and it's done more than well enough so i think it's more up to your liking but i wanted to do this test to see if it could help you out to see the major differences or no differences that you could possibly tell between the 120 frames per second with the 1080p versus the 4k between both cameras so I'll leave it up to you now to decide which one did you like better and why. Leave a comment down below of which one you would choose if you had the budget for both or what makes you think one would be better than the other despite of the differences in pricing, at, well, if you buy them new, I guess. So leave a comment down below. I would love to know your thoughts on that. But with all that said and done, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Share this video with a friend. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.